The main reason we use a compass is to get a bearing from where we are to wherever the site or feature or artefact might be. The main type of compass we use for this activity is a sighting compass, sometimes called a prismatic compass. There are several different types of compass that you might use, but these are the most useful for surveying because they allow you to get a very good optical fix on where you're going. The key thing with compass is that you have a compass card which has gradations through to 360 degrees. What this looks like when you look at it is that the numbers increase in a clockwise direction. So when you actually look through the compass, through the sighting channel there, you will actually see the numbers increasing towards the left. This is very important. It's very, very easy to actually misread by counting towards the right. When you look into the compass, what you will see is two sets of numbers, a larger series of numbers, which are generally the lower series. They are the compass bearings as you look through the instrument. There will also be a smaller set of numbers directly above them. They will be the reciprocal bearing, that is the opposite bearing as if you were at the point that you were looking back, coming back towards you. Now to look through a compass, one of the main considerations you have to have is that it is magnetic. If you're wearing glasses and hopefully can still see, take your glasses off. Even a relatively non-magnetic pair of glasses may well throw your reading off by several degrees. The next thing is how to hold the compass. You may be taking multiple readings and it gets quite uncomfortable if you have to keep on holding like this. Many of us when we hold a compass, hold it on the back of our hands like this. You can see there's no strain on your arm. Now to actually sight through the compass, when you look into it, you'll see there is a vertical crosshair with the numbers behind on the rotating card. You have to use your binocular vision to actually make this process work. So you sight towards your target. You keep both eyes open. There is a rough gun sight on top of the instrument. So you use that to get approximately in the ballpark of where you need to be. You then bring the instrument towards your better eye. At this point, both the image of the vertical crosshair and the ranging pole should be superimposed in your vision. Once the instrument is close to your face, close your other eye and bring the instrument all the way up while still trying to maintain it on a line with your target. That's the point where you take the reading or the bearing. You need to try as far as possible to make sure that the instrument is actually level. Remembering once again, it increases as you go to the left. 